So uh, there's there's some news out uh, today about American Rarers. Did, can you elaborate on that? Tell us absolutely. We are absolutely very pleased to announce that we have found what, at least initially, appears to be potentially a terrific new discovery in Wyoming, not too far from our existing large project at Halleck Creek. But uh, our initial... Uh, examinations showed that it is a much higher grade uh, deposit, ranging up to, get ready, 9.1, <laughs> and containing neodymium, praseodymium. So as I say, we're very excited. It's early days, of course, just an exploration discovery, but we are going to be fast-tracking getting those results back from, from um, ALS labs where we've sent them for analysis. And um, yeah, it could open the door to some interesting decisions. Well, you, you use the term discovery, which is which is the correct term for a uh, a deposit in in waiting. You know, you have to prove it. Tell tell us what's your timeline for actual actually producing something from these discoveries? What's your exact timeline? Well, Jack, I'm going to give you my ideal timeline, mm -hmm. because as you know even better than I do, the major hurdle for any mining company to bring a project to development is the permitting process. That's hurdle number one. Hurdle number two, of course, is capital, but that's another issue and one that is potentially more manageable due to this unprecedented level of U.S. government funding that we have these days. So my optimistic scenario is that we get through the permitting process with no significant objections on any front. Five to seven years, we might be producing something at Hallett Creek. Do, do you have a, a, I realize it's very early days, but do you have a feel for what type volume of production you might have in, in seven years, which is fine. The number is fine. Not really, because I don't want to speculate on that one. We're still working through the metallurgy, which is um, shaping up in a very good way. Um, the deposit has clearly demonstrated that it will yield itself to conventional processing. Okay. So if nothing else, we will go down the stream of conventional processing that is well known and has good experience. And of course, in our particular case, we have that variable in play with the research that we are partnering with that could, if it comes to fruition, absolutely change that whole processing circuit by allowing us to shortcut several steps using those biologic uh, agents for extraction and separation. So, and that would also obviously increase th throughput and our projections for output. So hmm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna go down that particular road, it's too tricky. Okay. At this point in time, though, what is the product you would sell into the market at this point? What are you thinking? Neodymium and praseodymium. Those are the two elements that are present in strongest concentrations at Hallett Creek. Um, we obviously have other materials present, but our initial JORC survey on that 25% of Hallett Creek didn't show those um, present in that area in economic concentrations. So we're gonna be focusing on neodymium and praseodymium. Okay, and, and you're talking about concentrates. Yes. Have, okay, so there's no plan at this point to go any further downstream. Well, we see ourselves as a mines to metal producer, but right no. now we're focusing on getting to the concentrate stage. We're being pragmatic. Okay, to be perfectly pragmatic, the United States has a presidential election every four years. Two, one's coming up in two years. Uh, normally, uh, when you have a change of parties uh, in the White House, which seems likely in 24, uh, you have a change in direction uh, of, of, of attitude towards things like mining or uh, uh, fossil fuel production, things like that. So you're saying seven years in the United States, that is a tad risky. 
Okay. But I do admit, I'll tell you that uh, I've been told uh, in the pen by people in the Pentagon that they are very surprised that the attitude of this administration towards natural resources uh, other than fossil fuels is the same as the previous administration. So because when, when it changed hands, I said, uh oh, what's going to happen? And they said they were worried. Today, two years, three years later, they're saying, well, it's about the same emphasis, the same interest in emphasis. So are you, I know you have a background in government. Um, what's your opinion of the long-term attitude of Washington towards developing secure supplies of critical minerals in, in the US? I'm bullish on DC, Jack. And don't fall out of your chair, I'm about to tell you why. Um, Part of, the, part of my optimism stems from the fact that regardless of whether the White House itself flips, we have this unprecedented bipartisan uh, agreement at, on the Hill. So the left is driven by climate change, which is certainly all around us, and the need, therefore, to develop cleaner, greener economies and mm -hmm. to do things overall in a cleaner, more sustainable way. And I don't believe that that particular passion is going to abate. I mean, the realities that the United States is living through. Fortunately, I'm not currently in Phoenix, but the duration of this heat wave in Phoenix is making news all around the world. Mm -hmm. Europe is being hit, et cetera. So I don't see any reason for the support from the left to abate despite the complications that they have in terms of their relationships with NGO community, tribal communities, and others. The support from the right, of course, comes from the need to improve the national security of the United States by reducing our dependence on China and or any other outside potentially inimical source of supply. And there's a real sense of urgency around that. In Arizona, for instance, we have quite a large uh, grouping of companies that service the Pentagon, and they are all sharply focused on the need to find alternative sourcing. And I think that when we look at what's currently going on, we see how the compromises have been reached. So there's significant funding for secondary recovery of rare earth and other critical materials from mm -hmm coal tailings and other tailings waste. That's a great stopgate measure if that technology comes to fruition. We also have seen this basically declaring that other countries who are allied with us, like Australia or Canada, are American <laughs> for purposes of the domestic requirements in the legislation. Now, I have a parenthetical um, issue there because Every country is also racing to develop its own cleaner, greener economy. So how much will even friendly states want to sell to, the, to us? But laying aside my parenthetical statement, that also is a great stopgate. Because when a company like mine is talking about coming to market in five to seven years, which is pretty fast in American terms, and it could be faster, um, you still have to fill that time in between. Because auto companies are not going to suddenly stop needing materials in the next, you know, three to five years. And the military is not going to stop needing its materials. So I think it's a kind of all of the above scenario that has proven itself to be politically palatable and probably will endure even if we do see political change, even in the White House. Okay, I'm pretty much in agreement with you, but I just wanted to add something. Canada and Australia are both enormously rich in critical mineral resources, as is the United States, actually. But the difference is Canada and Australia added together have only two times the population of California. So formation of capital is a problem in Australia. And, and this, is, this is what's driving Australia, for example, to supply China. And Canada supplies us. So I think that we're going to be okay with those two countries as our close out. They always have been our allies and, and suppliers. And I, I, I just want to uh, finalize this with one statement. 
in my opinion, the United States can never be self-sufficient in, in, in enough of these materials to transform our economy totally. We're going to always have to import. But what that means, in my opinion, is that things like rare earths are, will always be a seller's market in the United States. There's not going to be enough. So it's a very good long-term investment. But time will tell whether uh, our, our capital culture uh, decides to support it. That's, that's the real problem. Uh, Mel, we're obviously going to be talking to you for a long time. Uh, I don't know if I'll be around that long, but you probably, <laughs> you probably will. So thank you. And uh, we'll look forward to a report w when you get going on that discovery, trying to turn it into a deposit. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks so much for taking the time today, Jack. It's always a pleasure when I get to talk with you.